we're here at the Blackpool Dance Festival, and next to me I have Chris Stevenson, owner and head designer of Jordi. Hi Chris, how are you? Hi Bianca, how are you? Good, happy to talk with you finally. Yes, it's been so long. We never <laughs> talk. <laughs> no, we do talk, we're friends. <laughs> so Chris, um, I just want to start our interview with a bit of your history, because you have been a dancer, and I just want to um, ask you how you start dancing, uh, what made you fall in love with dancing, and in the end, how you wanted, like, why you wanted to change your career into a fashion designer mm -hmm. and, a, and a costume designer for dancers. Okay. Well, um, so around about 1976, was when I started dancing, and I was, I think, six years old. And there was a girl who, um, every story is going to involve, it was something new with a girl, by the way. <laughs> so there was a, a girl who was probably 10 uh, at the time, was taking me to school. And I, I guess I liked her, and she said she was going to dance class that night. And I, uh, I asked if I could go, and she said, um, well, you gotta ask your mom and dad first. So I did, I asked them, they said I could go. So I went to dance class, and um, there was like five boys and ten girls, and I thought, oh, cool, and uh, <laughs> and that's how I started dancing, and then um, that was in the northeast of England, and I I danced all the way through until I eventually retired in two thousand and one properly. Um, I started sewing when I was sixteen, and I was uh, dancing with a girl called Leslie Marsh. And I was living in her parents' house, not far from Liverpool. And it was the 80s, it was England, there was nothing on TV. And uh, Leslie was at school, her mom and dad were working, and her mom had a sewing machine. And I thought to myself, oh, okay. I had a, a cat suit yeah. that uh, John Lyons, if you ever get to watch this, you helped, even though you might not know that you did. Um, he was the guy who had made the cat suit for me. And um, I thought to myself, oh, I'm sure I could do that. I was wrong. I couldn't, but I thought I could. So I took it to pieces, and then I put it back together again. And then I took it to pieces again and pressed it, and I sticky-taped newspaper together on the ground, and I, and I laid down the, the four pieces of the cat suit and drew around it, yeah. put the original one back together and kind of put that to one side, and now I had a pattern, my first exactly, ever pattern. Yeah, yeah. And then I bought some lycra, and I started... And then, at that point, I was really um, a little obsessed and fascinated with the construction of clothes. I really liked it. My dad was a bricklayer, and um, I still, to this day, really enjoy the idea of being able to make um, a costume out of nothing, you know, out of just fabric. And uh, it, you know, so I enjoy designing, but I really, really, really enjoyed the construction of the costumes. I understand. And um, when you start your company, Jordi, um, obviously behind a name, it's a huge emotional uh, baggage, I would say. Could you please share, share it with us as well? Like the name, I know you're from uh, Newcastle and all that. Could you please tell us a bit? Of well, you know, uh, Bianca, in, I'm not sure about Romania, but in, in England, still to this day, it's... Uh, very sort of uh, a very class uh, st strict uh, society so there's working classes middle classes upper class you know and when you come from the town w where I come from very similar to the movie Billy Elliot you know it's very gray it's coal mining town that type of thing uh, it's a very 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 working class town and if you come from that town that area you're actually called a Geordie so somebody from London would be called a Cockney. Somebody from Liverpool would be a Scouser. If you're from uh, Newcastle, you are that area, you're called a Geordie. And it's a very working class thing. And what I experienced was people would leave that area and try to pretend to be something they weren't. Change how they speak, change how they act. And I never wanted that to happen. I'm very, very proud of being a Geordie. And um, I'm proud of being working class. And... Um, so I, th I said, well, I'll call the company Jordy. That way, if ever I have any success, I'll always keep my feet on the ground to remember where I'm from. I changed the spelling because it should have been G-E-O-R-D-I-E. That's too many letters. Yeah. So I just kind of frenetically changed it to Jordy with a J. 
it looks nice on the clothes and the rest is history so and about the crest about the patch that we see on uh, on the world champions uh, yeah. costumes well um, again that's a very personal thing everything about that I do with Jordi um, how I work it my son is here working with me um, the name the crest everything is personal and, and a lot of thought went into everything uh, I'm kind of obsessive so I obsess about a lot of things. I obsess about the crest. So uh, what happened was one of my competitors in the United States kind of ripped off my old logo, which was very simple and straightforward. Okay. And they just basically took it and wrote their name on it. So that kind of pissed me off a little bit. So I was Whoa. like, um, okay, I'll come, I'll come up with something that they can't copy. And, you know, I'm proud of being British. So I thought, what's more British than a, a crest or a crown? It's very regal. So I started looking into um, how to develop that. It took about two years. We did lots of different versions of it, but if you look on the top left, um, it's got mine and my wife's initials. We started the company together. And underneath that, you have uh, St. George's Cross, which is the English flag. To the right side of the crest, you have the black and white stripes, which is Newcastle United, the best, worst football team in the world. Um, I, I, they're my soccer team. Yeah. And... Um, Around the outside, is um, in Latin, it means he who dares wins. It's from the SAS in England, an elite fighting squad. And it, um, it deals with the competitive nature of what we do. He who dares wins. Yeah, so you've got to be in it to win it sort of thing. And the bottom part, Sic Luciat Lux Vestra in Latin, is from my Catholic school that I went to. It means let your light shine. And I think it deals with the artistic nature of what we do. The squiggles on the outside are from the Stevenson family crest. And then when you put a little crown on top of any crest, it means honor. And that's how we came up with it. Wow, amazing story. I love that. I love symbols. And I love that uh, you, you, made, you create something from such a rich history of yours. And you created everything which symbolizes you. And yeah, everything. I, I want to make a difference uh, in what it is that we're doing uh, what I'm doing with my life somehow. And I definitely want everything that we do with Jordy to be um, thought out and not just be for the sake of it. I wanted to. So when we, we came and, and did this at Blackpool, um, you know, I didn't want to just be another vendor at Blackpool. I wanted to be the vendor at Blackpool. Yeah. And um, I can honestly say, I think in five years, we, we've accomplished that. You know? Yes. It's, a, it's one of the most amazing booths. Honestly, only one of the most amazing booths. It's the only one of the booths. Is that going to get edited booth. out? That's disgusting. Only, I'm out of here. With this. <laughs> no, he's staying. He's staying. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, it's a lot of work put into it, and everything is so luxurious, and it creates uh, a sense of respect. I hope so. Yes, yes, yeah. I, I promise you. <laughs> and, um, Right. I would like to talk about uh, a bit about how you create designs because you have a team, uh -huh. um, and you also design uh, obviously costumes for the world champions Ricardo and Julia mm -hmm. and uh, Andrea Nino, mm -hmm. which are amazing dancers, all of them, um, and they have they're very professional people. Mm -hmm. How is it to create costumes for such big events like Blackpool or the International or...? Actually, it's all the same. So um, the process that you go through with, with um, Ricardo and Yulia, with Nino and Andra, it's definitely um, a collaboration. I know with Yulia, um, uh, the, the, there's a wonderful uh, designer, Espen Salver. He's their teacher. He's, he he, um, he has, comes up with great ideas for Yulia. Uh, Ricardo... Um, we kind of talk together about those kind of things. And this this shirt that uh, he's wearing uh, for this week uh, came from actually a blast that uh, that Yuli had. We saw an idea. Really? Inspiration is everywhere. Um, wow. Sometimes you know with Andra, she'll see. Oh, even with Yulia too. You know, see something in a magazine. Was, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? The <clears throat> the design isn't always necessarily the hard part because a lot of people can design and draw uh, or have taste and see something they like and say, oh, that's nice. The, the, the truly hard part, I think, is making it a piece of clothing, make, making it from a drawing to something that's real, tangible. And then on top of that, 
making it so that the proportions all hit the person in all just the right place. And then on top of that, making it that they can dance, you know, 30, 40 dances in it, upside down to whatever they want to do, and everything, everything stays. But that's really the challenge and, and I think the, the difficult part. And because my background was in the construction part of it, I, you know, I literally taught myself how to make everything that you're wearing, that I'm wearing, you know, not only could I technically sew all of these things, but I could also make the pattern for them. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't be able to do what I do um, if, I, if it wasn't for the fact that knowing how to put the things together. Um, as far as design, if I'm working with clients in the United States um, or, you know, anywhere around the world, what I've tried to do is instead of designing a specific dress, I'm trying to create sort of a, an overall look. I call it like branding or a signature look. Yeah. So we try to get into the mindset of the client and understand what it is they're looking, what are they looking to accomplish with their uh, costumes. Um, that way, it's kind of a little bit like in the Bible when they say, you know, give a man a fish and he eats for the night, but if you teach him how to fish, he eats for his life. You know? yeah. And so what I try to do is if when I'm meeting with the client, if we can come up with a style umbrella and all these adjectives to describe their overall look, then it's very easy. I can design now for them. I can design five years from now. It's all different ideas under that umbrella. And do you think uh, that a dress or a costume should uh, should um, match the personality of the person who's wearing it or create a different personality? I think actually it's always best when it matches. Um, but it's one of the questions I ask. So... For instance, I met with the little uh, juvenile uh, champions the other day, and they had um, a really specific look already. And I had to ask them and their parents, are we going with this look, or do you want us to be the uh, contradiction to that look? Exactly. Because they looked a certain way. And um, I think, like for instance, let's say I have a beautiful Indian lady who comes and sits in front, or um, an exquisite Hawaiian lady comes and sits in front. They nature is giving you something wonderful to work with, I think it's really good if you can use what you can. Why would you try to make somebody who's so exotic look more typical? Yeah. So and yeah. so forth. So you would create a design that could be exotic? I or, do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say this. For me, my um, some of the designers, um, I think in our business, you know, we have um, dressmakers and we have designers very different uh, yeah. things. So a, a lot of other designers that I see, it looks to me as though what they're trying to do is show how clever they are as a designer. And some of them are very clever designers, mm -hmm. not taking anything away from them. But their, their focus is on showing how crazy and creative they can be. And then sometimes the women end up looking like colorful chickens, you know, clever designs. But I don't know any women who want to look like colorful chickens. So for me, that's not what I'm focusing on. What I like to do is the first thing I want to do is understand what's important to that woman and make that woman look and feel like the best version of herself. And um, the second thing I want to do is try to help her with her dancing. So um, if it's a younger amateur couple or a prom lady who needs a little bit of help with movement, great, we need costumes that are going to show movement and different things like that. Um, and then the third thing I'll try and do is try and be a little clever with designs. But it's not as important as the first two. Okay, so you think that uh, if, for example, I have a dress that has a lot of feathers, do you think I will dance differently on a dance floor? I, I think you I look be... fabulous in feathers. Oh, of course. I just think. feathers. Maybe just one feather, one big feather. Yeah. Actually, you could do that feather dance, you know, where they dance? I give you, I give you two less. feathers. The two feathers. <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, um, I, you know, I, I, people come up and say, Chris, do you think I'd look good in blah, blah, blah? And most of the time, I'll say, I don't know. We have to talk first because I don't know what you're looking to accomplish. Feathers are tricky because feathers are slow. Um, and if you're doing feathers, you want to make sure that things are very fitted and tight in other places. Yeah. Otherwise, it can look ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so, but again, it, it all depends on what you want as the reaction. Um, you know, um, somewhat similar to uh, River May had did a book a long time ago. I forget what it's called, but he talked about how you know, yeah, in, in dancing, you you have um, 
you know, you have the, the message, the person sending the message, the medium they're using to send the message, the, the way it's transmitted, the, the, the medium the person's using to receive the message, the person receiving the message, all that kind of that thing with dancing. It's the same thing with design. So otherwise, you could just sit there and just draw pretty... It's very pretty, easy. Yeah. I can draw pretty dresses all day. Yeah, exactly. But the idea is, if you're sitting with me, I want not just to draw a pretty dress, I want to draw the dress. The dress that's right for you. It shouldn't be right for someone else. It yeah. should be right for you. And um, sometimes we make it and sometimes we don't. I think the, the fact that we're still around after 22 years and doing what we're doing means that we probably do it right more than we do it wrong. But, um, yeah, I'm, I, I think that's what I try to do. And, uh, of course, uh, I suppose our audience will be very curious about uh, Yulia and Ricardo and Ina and Andra, for example. Take Who? You, you, yeah, just the world champions, it's fine. <laughs> um, how, uh, how did the collaboration with them start? Oh, uh, well, so, um, are they here? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I better tell the truth. Um, <laughs> no, I was actually USDC which is the United States Dance Championships. Actually, I go a little bit behind that. So I started the business in, uh, 22 years ago. And I want to say 12 years ago, something like that, we found out that um, a lot of our staff were stealing from us and doing a lot of unscrupulous things. So we had to let everybody go. And it was really just the three of us left. And we moved back into our house. So we'd been in business a while, and we sort of built up. And then we, we moved back into the house because we had smaller staff. It was, we were surviving. Yeah. And we had a particularly stressful uh, year. And then on top of that, my wife was pregnant with our fourth child. It was a lot of stress. And um, we sort of survived that. And then after that period, we, we kept small, you know, because we had a little scar tissue from the, the things that people had done. So we stayed small. We had, didn't have a lot of money. Clients were happy, and I was just doing all the sewing again. And um, my dad was uh, ill with Alzheimer's. And uh, he was very young, but he had Alzheimer's. And he, um, he, he died. And he, when he was getting ready to die, um, we literally we didn't have enough money for me to both be there for him to die and to stay there for him, for the funeral. I had to choose. So I chose, I, my, the end of my relationship with my dad um, was over the phone and I was there for the funeral. So I went to the funeral, I was very overweight, I was probably depressed. And, and of course I was depressed, I was at my dad's funeral. And I looked at my dad in the coffin and I had a vision, like it just, it was a message It was like my dad was screaming at me from the coffin. And he's like, what are you afraid of? And I said, what am I afraid of? Okay, so people had screwed me over. So, and I, it changed my life in, in that moment. And I came back from there. I lost like 50 pounds of weight in three months. I moved the business out of the house in March, back into a location again. That was in March. In October of that year, I was at USDC, and I was talking to a friend of mine, Dan Rutherford, who's very good friends with Ricardo and Yulia. And we were watching Ricardo and Yulia dance in the semifinal, and I noticed they didn't have a tag on their arm. And I said, well, who, do, who are they sponsored by? And he said, actually, they're not sponsored by anybody. And he turned around to continue talking to me. I'd already left. <laughs> and I went to the dressing room, and I waited until they finished their jive. And I'd never really spoken to Ricardo before. I'd spoken to Yulia many times. And I, he was still panting, still out of breath. And I said, hi, Ricardo, I'm Chris Stevens, and I own Jody. And I would cut off my right arm uh, to sponsor you. What do I have to do? And he said, oh, that's so nice. Typical Ricardo, he was so lovely. And he said, um, can we talk tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah, definitely. So um, that was in September. By the time November came, Ohio Star Bowl, it was the first competition that um, we were dressing Ricardo and Yulia. And um, we've been together ever since. They've changed my life. We've built our company um, from really the pits of where it was. 
and I've worked very hard for them. They've worked very hard for me. It started off completely a business relationship, but I know I probably will never have a relationship with any of the couples that I work with like I've had with Ricardo and Yulia because one, the type of people that they are. They're, um, I don't know, I, I can't put it into, Oh, okay, good. So, well, um, yeah, I don't, I don't quite know how to put it into words what they mean to me. Um, it's been, you know, it's been exhausting, you know. But they had everybody has tried to take them from us, and. Um, they're the, they're the most loyal, loving, professional, um, wonderful uh, people and dancers that I could ever hope to meet. And I've made plenty of mistakes since um, working with them. And they've never lost their temper, lost their patience. They want what they want. That's why they're the world champions. And I... They, I think they know from me that I give them every ounce of what I can give them. Um, I've missed family events for them. I've, I can't, I mean, I don't know. Like if it's, if it's possible for me to do it and it's legal, I'll do it for them because they, they transformed my life. My life was going nowhere. I was lost and um, they've allowed me to help them and in return have helped me so much that I can never repay them. And I, I know I'll never have that relationship. Because even if I find the next wonderful, beautiful people, that, and I hope I do, moving forward, my life is different now than what it was back then. My dad had just died. I, I just turned the company around. And, um, you know, they, they should have left me years ago, and they never did. It's, yeah, I mean, I understand having the right people and uh, even in this world of dance, um, each of us, we feel like family, uh, uh, like dancers, competitors between them. We create this big family because we share the same passion, mm. dance and creating yeah. beautiful things, helping each other grow, growing up together. And, and I understand what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, I don't fit in the dance world at all. I'm completely, I realize that. Um, but to be honest, I don't want to, you know, because it's the same reason why I call the company Jody. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business that's very high on image. And it's funny because I'm in the costume business, which is all image. But I think image without substance is, is ridiculous. And I don't want it to be that. And I don't ever want to pretend to be middle class is something I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm a simple guy, but I do think I'm um, talented. I have a few talents, um, and I'm a hard worker. I got that from my dad and my mom, my mom of course, <laughs> but um, my dad was super hard worker. And um, we, for me, the people that really matter to me in this industry, uh, they're the ones that are authentic and real, and, and everybody else who wants to be phony and all that kind of stuff, I'm not really into it. So I don't get too um, worked up uh, when people say nice things about me, and therefore I don't have to get too too upset when people say not nice things. <laughs> they try to not let it bother me too much. Yeah, <laughs> it, and in this world, it happens quite a lot. Well, yeah, of course. When you you know when you come and you do things the way we do it, we do we do things quite big, um, you know, and obviously you put a big target on your back, but. Um, you know, haters are going to hate and lovers are going to love. So I, we have a lot more lovers than we have haters. And uh, I really love it. I like working with the little kids the other day was, was really wonderful. And then, of course, you have them and then you have Rick and Yulia. You know, you have and everybody in between. Pro-Am ladies in, in America, my God, thank you, all of you. You, you, you feed us. You know, you, you're the reason why we have Jordy actually is because of them. Um, America has been so amazing to me. And, um, and my children, and uh, it's just, I mean, I came to America with $300, and that was given to me by my mom and dad, 
who had borrowed it from somebody else. So it was like really, you know, it was tough, and we didn't uh, we didn't really have anywhere to live. I think, yeah, we we stayed in this this little hotel where prostitutes and druggies were using and stuff like that in New York City back in '93, and you know, we've come a long way. And um, going a bit further from the emotional side, because I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> um, um, my curiosity would be, uh, which is your favorite Yulia's dress? If you can oh pick God one. Uh, is she listening? Is she, is she, did Yulia leave? Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know which is, would be hers, I would have asked. Um... The next one. The next one? Yeah. <laughs> Can you uh, please explain the story behind it? It hasn't, been, it hasn't begun yet. The next one. Oh, the next yeah. one. <laughs> I understand. I hope there's always a next one. Even long when they retired and they've got four, four little Ricardo and Julia's running around, <laughs> I hope that they're still dancing because I want to make dresses for her. Um, when you work with people of that level, it brings you so, you know, I experienced it with, um, uh, I would say probably at first I experienced it with Sammy Stopford and Barbara McCall when I worked, I used to dress them long, for a long time. The level of perfection that you need to get when you're working with people of that level, it's phenomenal. And then I would have to say Louis Van Amstel, when he was with Karina and I did all of their clothes, he also was um, an amazing uh, perfectionist and artist, and he re, re, you know raises the bar, and and so many um, uh, amazingly talented people that we've been fortunate enough to dress. But Ricardo and Yulia, you know, she's the nine times professional world champion, and yet, you know, many many nights at Jordy in New Jersey, we're there at midnight and we're lying on the floor, looking at stone charts. And just deciding, what do you think about this? Oh, you like this one? Oh, this is the only thing. You know, she's into it. Everything that she does, she's into it, 100%. And um, it just, uh, it is, I will tell you this, and anybody listening, it is not an accident that they are the world champions. It absolutely is not. Um, there, are, there are many brilliant dancers out there, but it's been my experience that the, um, their combination of work ethic, Talent, physical beauty, skill, um, just the whole overall package. There are no days off for them. I've never worked with anybody who is more disciplined and, and uh, committed to what it is they're doing. So the dresses, the costumes, it's the same way. They're just into every bit of it. And I love it. It just makes me be so challenged, you know. So every client, even though the clients get upset when I come away here for two and a half weeks, um, <laughs> I will say this, I think it makes their costumes better because you come here and everything's just raised to that level yeah. where you, you, just, you just feel like, wow, you know, like everything's got to be so perfect. You go back and, it, and you continue that with your clients back home. Right. So I would like to go a bit into the technical aspects for a little while and then I think we can end this beautiful interview. No, don't end. I'm having such a good time. No, me too. Um, I would like to ask you if you have some tip, tips and tricks. For example, let's say for juniors, then for youth, then for amateur. What type of dresses would be indicated for them to wear? You mean like what would I advise for yeah. the different well, boy. <laughs> so it was juveniles, juniors. What was it? What, wh whichever way okay. you want. We can start from the top. Or from the. Well, you know, I think that when you get really high level, professional amateur, like top six in the world, at that point, you should have already established uh, like a signature look, and no matter how many people try to advise you to do this or do that. Do th you know, be consistent and stay with your look and, and don't go too, don't swear too far away from it. So you're trying to um, uh, really um, be consistent with the theme. Um, if you're that mid-level dancer in any group, yeah. I would say movement. Yeah. 
a lot of a lot of the time when you look at the lower rounds in big competitions like this, they everybody looks so amazing warming up. Mm. And then on the dance floor, once the dancing starts, they can look a little rigid. Yeah. So I think a costume that's going to be in const consistent motion, maybe even a, a costume that has multiple rhythms to it. Yeah. So if you had ruffles, you could have different le lengths of ruffles or fringe, different lengths of fringe. So it's, it's having different rhythms to it. Choose that over being like a chicken. <laughs> I don't know why I'm picking on chickens, but, <laughs> you know... You know what I mean? Like, it's just something that's very flattering to the body. You know, a, a woman is very complicated, you know, and every woman's different. So you got to, even if you're 20, 14, or 35, or 72, um, and we design for all those ages, each one of those people needs different things to feel amazing. And that's got to be the most important thing. Stop trying to be fashion designers. Stop trying to make it like, like you're going to be on a runway in Milan. It doesn't matter. It isn't a competition out there of who's got the best costume. You don't want to be the best dressed dancer in the 48s. <laughs> you want to win. Yeah. That's what you want to win. Yeah. And I hate to say this. It's probably bad for my business, but nobody wins because of their costume. Yeah. Yes? So you can lose <laughs> if you win really a bad one, but you don't win because of it. So... I would say be clever at your own risk, but stick to what's going to make you look and feel your best, no matter what level you're at, and what's going to help your dancing, especially if you're not quite there yet. That should be very, very important. And also, another good thing is, um, let's say, for instance, um, you're, um, you're coming to the International Black Bull UK, something like that. Well, you don't have a Latin panel of adjudicators if you're dancing Latin. You have standard and Latin dances. Yeah. So I think that sometimes, particularly with those kind of competitions, it's, it's good to be something a little bit more traditional because it's something that all people can appreciate. But I'm going to contradict myself now because you really should never try to either choose a dress or design a dress to please other people. You should focus on yourself, but be take chances with caution would be my advice. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's very true. And uh, my last question would be, what is your favorite memory designing Yulia's dresses and Ricardo's costumes? So I can't see the next one? No, not okay. this time. You... you <laughs> Um, you already said that. I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, actually, the very first world championships that I ever made their clothes for uh, was in Innsbruck. I think seven or eight years ago, and they had won. I think it was seven years ago because they had won two world championships prior to that, before me. So. I had everything to lose and nothing to gain. I was just trying to maintain where they were. Exactly. And they were dancing against Michael and Joanna and everyone else, but Michael and Joanna had, had beat them in the previous competition. And I was in beautiful Innsbruck in the middle of the, the Swiss Alps, and um, they won. It was amazing. They danced fantastic. The costumes were, I have to say, heavenly. And um, I was flying home the next morning, and I had to leave that night after the party. And I came outside into the parking lot, and I looked up at... Uh, <laughs> wow, I was such a big girl. Sorry. It's okay. So, it's your fault. I'm going to beat you up for this later, asking <laughs> tough questions. But I looked up at the sky, and it was a beautiful... What happens if I raise my arm? Huh? Yeah. It was <laughs> it was a beautiful it was a beautiful night. It was there was no clouds in the sky, the million um, stars, and I remembered, uh, you know, like <sighs> thanking God. I was very aware of where I'd come from. 
Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you.